All right, example problem number one, two, one, day two. So the problem just starts out. The following graph right here shows the height of the flying disc with respect to time. So here's the amount of time it was in the air. And here's the height. So at zero seconds, it was thrown from a height of four feet. That's what this is saying. So maybe you've got this guy, you know, he's six feet tall, but he throws the disc from that height. So that's where it's starting. Okay. That's kind of the idea behind this problem. Now it says, what is the equation of the function? Well, first of all, you look at this and you should say, hey, wait a minute. That is a parabola or a quadratic. So I need to know how to fill in these missing pieces from this equation. And I know there's a BX in there, but like I said in the pre-lesson, this is going to be one for what we're doing right now. So I also said start with the vertex. So it's two, a shift, that's, that's the point right there, two to the right. So I say, okay, that's x minus two squared, and then we go up 10. We still need to find a. How are we going to do that? Well, this is my y-intercept. That's a, that is a point they just give us. Now, if they gave us a point over here like 3, 8, we could also plug that in. But it looks like this Algebra 2 uh, curriculum right now is bent on giving you the y-intercept all the time. So my x is 0, my y is 4, and I'm going to take that information and plug it in here so I can find that remaining variable. So y equals a x, my 0 minus 2 squared plus 10. I'm going to get rid of that 10 over there. 4 minus 10 is negative 6. Negative 2, remember PEMDAS, we got to do whatever's in the parentheses first. Squared is 4. And 4a, divide by 4, divide by 4. Simplify that, we'd get negative 3 halves. The negative makes sense, because notice, it's been reflected. Our normal parabola would open upward. This is opening downward. So that makes sense. So I put that where? I put it right into that bad boy. So y equals negative 3 halves x minus 2, don't forget the squared, plus 10. It's sad when students forget to include this. If you do forget to include that, that turns it into a linear equation, and that is 100% wrong. And it's just such a minor detail. Be careful with that. Okay, uh, last problem, example two. Uh, this problem is just taken from your textbook, example four. I think it's the second one in, in example four on page 75. We've got a picture of a guy with a uh, volleyball, and he's throwing it, so or kicking it, or what have you. So he kicks it. And um, this is your time in seconds. And so at the moment he kicks it, you know, the clock starts. So at zero seconds, he kicked it. His foot or his arm uh, made contact with that ball or let it go at four feet. You can see it went up here. After one second, it went up to 20 feet. And then, of course, it comes down, and this just keep, keeps going. Uh, underground, uh, I doubt it, but who knows? He might have kicked it. I'm not going to get crazy over here, but this also goes this way. But all we care about is what's captured in this picture. So number one, we know it's a parabola. So we know we're going to have to build off of this. We're going to start with the vertex. Here's my x value adjustment, my y adjustment. We know what to do with that by now. So we're going to go y equals a. It's to the right one. So it's x minus 1. It's up 20. So we stick her in there. Now we got to find a. We're going to get that from this hidden point right there. We don't really know technically any other point except this guy right there. That's 0, 4. 
So there's my X and my Y. So 4 equals A, 0 minus 1 squared plus 20. I'm just in the habit of getting rid of that. And then I'll clean this up in a minute. But negative 16 equals, now we got to take care of this. Negative 0 minus 1 is negative 1, squared is 1. 1 A, guess what? That means A is negative 16. Where do we put that? Well, right here. So y equals negative 16 times x minus 1 squared plus 20. Now I'm going to throw a little zinger at you today because uh, I don't really want to cover this in great detail tomorrow, um, but it needs to be talked about. There's going to be part of your instructions that say, by the way, leave your answer in this form. And it's the first time you you guys have been told to do that. What that really means is multiply this out. And you're like, what? But there are benefits, and the book is going to ask you to do this, but there's benefits to having this in this form. So what does that even mean? Well, if you recall, x minus 1, I'm just chopping this out right now, squared, means x minus 1 times x minus 1. Guess what? We're back to our good friend, Boyle. So, what's that stand for? First two terms. x times x is x squared. What's the out? out o stands for outer. So that would be x times negative 1, which is negative x. Inner, negative 1 times x is another negative x. And then last, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Now what do you do after you FOIL these? You add like terms. And I only have two of them right here. So that is x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now that just comes from that box. So I have a little negative 16 sitting out in front of it. And I have a plus 20 sitting on the end. What do I do with that? I'm not quite there yet. Well, distribute, distribute, distribute. So I get negative 16x squared plus 32x minus 16 plus 20. Notice these constants are considered like terms. So I'm one more step away. So I'm going to write y or f of x. I'll stick with y equals negative 16x squared plus 32x plus 4. And there's only one problem that uh, I actually assigned where you're going to be expected to do that. So it's not a big deal. It's a little extra work. Just be prepared for that to happen on your homework. All right, good luck, guys.